Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, the richest family in the world. Who was the wealthiest person in every century? This is actually an incredibly difficult question to get an answer to, but in the 19th century, it wasn't actually a person, but it was a family. The Rothschild family, descendants of Mayor A. Rothschild, is still around today and is believed to be worth over a trillion dollars combined. Indeed, this is thought to be the largest private fortune in the history of the world. So who are the Rothschilds exactly, and how did they amass this tremendous fortune? Mayor Amschel Rothschild, the patriarch of the Rothschild fortune, was born in 1744 in a Jewish ghetto in Frankfurt, Germany. When his father passed away, Mayer was still young, but he took over the family's currency exchange business. The work required Mayer to know a lot about different kinds of money, currency, and coins, and soon he became an expert in rare and old coins. To supplement the business, he became a rare coin dealer. Now, it just so happens that the Crown Prince of Hesse, a territory in Germany, was an avid rare coin collector. Upon hearing of Mayer's immense collection, he approached him, and they made several deals. The deals went so favorably that in a matter of years, when the Crown Prince became William IX, Landgrave of Hesse Castle, essentially governor of the region under the rule of the Holy Roman Emperor, who was Joseph II at the time, he hired Mayer Rothschild to be the Hofactor of his considerable fortune. A thorough description of the position of Hofactor is probably worth a today I found that video by itself, but essentially it translates to a court Jew. While politically incorrect today, it was quite a favorable, honorable, powerful, and well-paid position. Essentially, a Hofactor was a Jewish banker who dealt with the finances, tax collecting, and money lending in regards to European royalty, something close to what a high-priced accountant would do today. This it began the Rothschilds' rise to unparalleled fortune. Mayer's international financial influence continued to rise through the French Revolution from 1789 to 1799, when he handled virtually all of the financial aspects of the war. As put by the Count Corti in the book The Rise of the House of Rothschild, every government wanted money. There were loans to be raised, exchanges to be negotiated, armies to be clothed and fed. Wherever there were business to be done, there was the Rothschild with their offers and quotations. By 1800, Rothschild was one of the ten wealthiest men in France. Frankfurt. He also had five sons, each taking up the family business. When they got old enough, they were strategically situated across Europe, bringing their wealth, experience, and family connections with them. This is how many historians have speculated that the Rothschilds were able to keep their wealth when so many other prominent families lost it during these turbulent times in Europe. With a judicious selection of points of vantage, the Rothschild brothers were stationed in Frankfurt, London, Naples, Paris, and Vienna, each becoming indispensable to his adopted country, yet working together with the family to ensure maximum profit. Their only true allegiance was to the Rothschild name. In 1812, Mayer Rothschild passed away, but not before assuring the continued fortune of the family for centuries to come by carefully arranging marriages for his sons, often to cousins, keeping everything within the family in order to ensure the wealth never left, similar to royal intermarriages. The European wars of the early 19th century they furthered the Rothschilds' wealth and influence. Nathan Mayer Rothschild was the most cunning, savvy, richest, and possibly dishonest of the famed five Rothschild brothers. Historians argue the morality behind his methods, and what are true stories, and what were made up due to jealousy and sometimes anti-Semitism, but the result remained the same. He became exorbitantly rich. Stationed in London when the Napoleonic Wars officially broke out in 1803, he single-handedly helped finance the Duke of Wellington and his opposition to France. He arranged shipments of bullion to armies across Europe that were fighting France. He also used the Rothschild network across Europe, a system of couriers, agents, and information gatherers and, as legend had it, carrier pigeons, who fed him news of the war, at times a full day ahead of the government's knowledge. This allowed him to spread rumors of losses when he knew full well that Britain and her armies had won. He could depress stock prices, and when people panicked, he bought. The most well-known example of this was pertaining to the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Rumors ran rampant that Britain had lost the crucial battle, causing markets to crash. When word came back that Napoleon had suffered a terrible defeat, it was Nathan Mayer Rothschild who reaped the enormous benefits from previously buying stock and bonds at depressed prices. This was speculation and insider trading at its finest. 
practices that would no doubt find him in prison today in many nations. As with many extremely rich industrialists of the 19th and 20th century, i.e. Rockefeller, Carnegie, etc., while their practices may not have held to the highest moral standards, they did use their power and money for good causes as well. Nathan Rothschild was known as an abolitionist, working towards eradicating the slave trade in Britain. For instance, he helped finance the 20 million pounds, which is about 1.7 billion pounds today, or 2.6 billion dollars, needed to buy out British plantations. He also helped in the passing of the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833. Through the 19th century, the Rothschilds' wealth continued to grow. Nathan had seven children, including four sons. Sons were the ones that carried on the family business. His son, Lionel, became the first Jewish person to be elected into the House of Commons in Britain, though previous to this, Jews were supposed to be barred from it. In order to get around this, the Prime Minister, John Russell, introduced and got passed the Jewish Relief Act of 1858, taking away this restriction. He had a social conscience as well, helping to finance relief for the Irish famine. As the years rolled by and the 19th century turned into the 20th, the Rothschilds continued to be among the world's wealthiest and most influential bankers. Nathan Rothschild, better known as Lord Rothschild, began issuing loans to countries beyond Europe, most notably the United States. Beyond banking, the Rothschilds were also well known in the world of wine and art collecting. In the late 19th century, the Lord Rothschild arranged for the purchase of several estates in France. They became world-renowned vineyards, and to this day, Rothschild wine is among the most expensive in the world. As for art collecting, the Lord Rothschild and his brother, Albert, were avid collectors and buyers of works of art, filling their enormous homes with priceless paintings, provocative sculptures, French furniture, china, and scientific equipment. Said the Baroness Bettina de Rothschild to the New York Times in 1999 about her great uncle, the Lord Rothschild, it was Nathaniel who especially loved buying scientific instruments. Who could ever think that microscopes were beautiful? But these were. These collections were hailed across Europe and the envy of many. However, in March of 1938, within 24 hours of Hitler's SS army annexing Austria, Nazis stripped the Rothschilds' homes in the region of all their priceless possessions. The intention was to put them on display at the proposed Hitler Museum in Linz, Austria, which is Hitler's hometown. Hitler had all the art hidden away in a ski resort high in the Alps. The massive collection was finally discovered by American GIs after the war. It took 54 years, that's until 1999, before the Austrian government decided to give the art back to its rightful owners, the descendants of the Rothschild family. Many of these works were hanging in Austrian museums prior to this, despite the knowledge that they had been stolen during the war. However, months after receiving most of the art back, the Rothschild family decided to donate or sell nearly all of the collection. Said Baroness Bettina de Rothschild at the time, But it just doesn't make sense to keep them. We all live very differently today than my parents did. Not only are the security questions terrifying and the insurance costs prohibitive, but this type of 18th century French furniture needs a butler and two housemaids constantly polishing it. That's just not the way we live. They've also, in the past century or so, donated several amazing estates, such as the Waddles and manner. Today, the Rothschild family still exists and is still ridiculously rich, as mentioned, with a combined wealth estimated at over a trillion dollars. Though in recent times, on the whole, they've tried to keep themselves very low profile, even with donations to charities. They also no longer focus as much on banking, instead often focusing their energies on wine, asset management, charity work, real estate, and social activism, attempting to keep up with the family motto, Concordia Integritas Industria. This means unity, integrity entrepreneurship. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us with a small and voluntary financial contribution to help in making these daily videos, please head over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. And as always, thank you for watching.